the ten a little bit of tendencies that the duelists tend to do. And elevate now. Guns of their own. It was just a little behind the previous. Damage traded out on both duelists. Vera and Nakia both taken down. About half HP, just above that. One way smoke comes in. Again, elevate. Time and time again to get control over this. The port A main Reckoning. portion of the map. Here comes the reckoning. Vera's in a weird position. A slide comes through. Wayne just fires pot shots through the smoke. Gets a double kill. Gets a triple instead. And Vera and Siren both taking out frags of their own. It just instantly shut out. This A main execute is just not working out for Elevate. Wing not only getting a 3k, but doesn't quite fall off a bit. So, I mean, that's a great congratulations as one. The yeah. second one is that Juicy and Grumble didn't even need to be inside. Just completely block out. And I think that's what happens when you don't take control up in the library, right? You know, up in mid site. If you really want to flush in, you only have one A main to work with. Kind of similar to what Breeze would be if you do not take control of double doors. Right there. Yeah, the problem with this map of Abyss is that you can kind of find yourself in a, in a very insistent pattern of constantly executing the A side because it technically is the easier side. But it's not easy when you have Vera just running you down the smoke just enough for his escape as well. Wayne holding for the trade swing coming through and a bunch of util wasted from Elevate trying to find a trade on that kill. Make that two kills, but none found. Pudge, Riza both out of the round already. Juicy makes his presence known towards mid. And now they know at the very least that there is an up in play, but this up down setup is devastating to say the least. Nakia, only good for one. And DSG looking real clean so far on this map. I um, love the fact that we're actually seeing a very similar Vera that, I, that we know of, a tried and true, uh, making the aggression there, pushing up through, of course, with the follow up, the teammates as well. And DSG, although this is something we thought Elevate could have had in their back pockets, it's now looking to be something DSG is running away with. And this is not even due to the fact that they're doing flanks or any any sneaky plays or anything. It's just pushing out aggressive plays, getting information and working off of the Elevate. Still hovering over one area, now going to swap it out, switch it out. And we also have Reko in another area. Flaring is going to be the first one taken down uh -oh. by Wayne instead as Vera makes the push through. I love the proactiveness, finds out the lurk, execute again towards this A site, but they've tried it time and time again and they lost it. The tripwire is perfectly done, Grumble! Let's out a roar, double kill right there, makes it a third and Wayne picks up the last DSG looking on the fire. They don't miss a beat. Aggression on one side of the map, and the anchors clean up the rest. Wayne is not even using his utilities at this point. He is waiting for them to walk through their own utilities and using it against them. <laughs> you, you take a look at that. They're out of phase whatsoever. They already got, they already got sight, but they're not going to get the spike down. And with that, it's kind of that unsure situation when it comes to having a new map to play on, right? You know, you cl can't claim the sight, but what do you do then? And do you push out more? Do you, you just go for the spike plan? They've tried the first plan, but it hasn't really worked out. Uh, I guess the answer is to try mid, but again, DSG super aggressive on one side of the map. That's what you want when you have a Dion in your hands. Gonna be picking up an ultimate all for Siren as well, one closer to the Breach ultimate. They're gonna pivot here towards this B site. Nakia with the knives in hand, he needs to go huge for his team. An interesting trip on the top of the site. Can see it, but uh, yeah, Grumble again. The anchor here, the smoke gonna be taken back. Spike should be going down, and oh, Rick oh. goes in a pretty deep spot, but Vera hard clears him. Fantastically done. Three ultimates, Pudge with the lockdown, Riza with the Hunter Suri available for this post plan, but it's just an eco round. But Nakia, oh. the floating butterfly stings like a bee. Nice shot coming in from them, and the lockdown. Tap of the spike though, they want to commit this up and above. Gravity Well will take them off with the spike for the time being. And we'll just delay it for a bit. Oh, stun comes in as well. Counter stun. And the Hunter's Ray, here it comes. Riza firing bolts of fury down lane. Finds a second as well and is just left onto Grumble. The only anchor on this site. And the thrifty round looking likely. But Jake cleans up the last. They find their rifles, but I don't think a lot of them are going to be surviving. But still, it's a round on the board nonetheless. Elevate. A surprise DSG with an eco round with a couple of outs sprinkled in as well. That's a second on the board. I love the change up here. They realize they're getting pushed up in A. 
Uh, try to just avoid that fight. Push up in B, he gets some information and mid side, and then make the decision into B side. Also, number one, abilities utilized. Ultimate utilized. Great stuff coming in for Elevate. I think they're starting to get into their flow. But if you know DSG like I do, they're going to come up with something to counter that eventually. And this could be it. They realize that Elevate is not going to bite the bullet. They're going to just hang around in A anymore. But Naki and Pache going to make waves up in mid side here. Library is gone. And the little tunnel that we have is now in control of DSG as they try to swap back in to retreat. Yeah, I mean, nice attempt from DSG. Again, they try an aggressive push. This time it was down mid. They almost got to Pajay, but Pajay managed to find the first kill. Straight out though, so not the worst thing in the world for DSG. At least they get that trade frag. They give up mid in the meanwhile, as right I think there. Juicy was bested. Uh, I'm not sure how. He was holding an AWP towards A, but gets taken down. Harbour Wall comes through. Additional smoke from the Asha just to assist. No nice charges. break of the trip as well. And Grumble from the heavens. I don't think he should be able to find any piece of... Or any angle that he can find a kill from. And yeah, it's just gonna be a retake setup. And Elevate love to play this. They have all the utilities and the protocols intact. They have the Aljo and Riza as well. It's gonna be difficult for DSG if they want to bring this one back. Yeah, usually the issue comes when the plan is down from Elevate. Uh -oh. Styra manages to find the Akia though. Paranoia comes through. He's actually wrapping around. Oh, but the Aljun does buy him out. He realizes he can't play this area. Grumble with the tap. Tries to go for another, but he gets taken down by Redco. Wayne comes back with the re-aggression. But they haven't really flushed him out. Spike is sticking down. Wayne goes up with the aggression one more. Fine suit. Styra manages to get one more as well. A little bit preempted from Elevate. They've cost them the round. Oh no, it was so close as well. Incredible work by Wayne there to pick up three kills. He was trying something really risky. The Howl drone will push him <laughs> off in that uh, danger spot, right? The the ledge on the side of the map. Yep. And from then on out, I mean, you didn't. They didn't really exactly have the best utility for that post plot. The Owl drone was expended pretty early on. There's no real shock darts available. The tap of the spike will also bait it out the gravity well. So DSG took matters to their own hands, Styron stunned up in heaven, and that allowed Wayne to creep up slowly, quietly, find that, that frag onto Ritko, and then it was a 2v1 up against Riza in heaven. Uh, angle disadvantage wasn't great for him. He, they would see him first, and there was two of them anyway. So very, very nice round coming for DSG. A 3v4 retake comes in, and they're going to call a timeout, which is pretty interesting. It looks like they have all the answers so far, but... Perhaps taking a preemptive one just to assess their options. They got a couple of great ultimates. Juicy's on the Blade Storm, Siren's on the Rolling Thunder, Op in the hands of Vera as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, a great player always says, like, you know, always plan ahead. Perhaps it's what this guy is taking towards their books as well. They do have ultimates to expand here. Um, not too sure whether they are planning on how they're going to address the next round in particular, or it could be on how they're going to try to close out the four rounds that is, that is to come within this half. Elevate, though. They have ultimates available, ultimate available in Rico here, Reckoning, which has allowed them to run through A before, but not exactly secure them the round. So if they really want to try to make something happen, they have to change it up, which is what they've been doing, but not the best of guns on Rico here. And going into Vera's domain. Dodges the recon ball, just gotta hold down the line. Oh. A flick shot comes in, but no kill just yet. A nice smoke here will allow him to creep up close. It's a bit of a one way as well. I can't drop the smoke. Yeah, it just has to disengage. His position has been compromised. He's going to try a different part of the map. I think disguise are a bit aware of this as well. Just as the smoke fades, Vera's still going to hold this midline. He can just come to his teammates. Hey, there's nobody here, but the read from Elevate looks like it's going to be the correct one because it's only Wayne here. But time and time and again, they've tested Wayne and he's got multi frags on this side. Can it happen again? Wait, pressure on him. Oh. Reckoning comes through, has to just opt for a retake setup. So yeah, great utilities coming in from the side of Elevate. Will allow them to get that spike planted. And a post plant position yet again. Might be a spam fest. I uh, wonder what utilities they have for, the, for this post plant. I mean, there is Five an Anthem. Yep, they have shock darts, but that's kind of all they have. I'm not too sure whether Riza is aware of the Rolling lineup Thunder. just yet. Rolling Thunder comes in though for the side of DSG. They are pushing in the issue, going into one little oh, hole. Even for the operator, they are dropping like flies. Elevate does not expect them to push them so quickly. And now they're fighting for their lives up in main. Vahara's running so much juicy oh, oh, oh. with the blade, just with the spam. 
and they didn't even need to try to fight for the post, the, the fuse. They had to go in with the aggression and they went off with a full-on skirmish. Brilliant protocol coming in from DSG right there. Styron calling for the fight first. He breached, um, you know, he th rolling thundered A main, the entirety of A main, the left side, so that DSG could gain control over that position, prevent Elevate from just standing in smokes and spamming them down with utility. And it was, it, it turned out to be a fantastic call. Elevate just did not have the answer. They had lineups with the Marlies, Go Drive and Nano Swarms, but, you know, without any players putting actual pressure. That was a really, really tough, tall task to ask for. Oh. Now 7-2, down at Eco, Elevate. Again, they want to test this ace side, but time and time again, they walk into the waiting arms of Wayne, and I don't think he's lost this side too many times. Finds the first, and there he goes, out of there. Nice opening kill at the very least. Puts him in an advantageous post ban position. Yeah, this is really tough. Even if you want to try to concuss onto Wayne, or any situation to catch him down, he's able to just teleport out of that. Vera is going to pick up one as well, as Wayne once again enters the fray and gets another grumble, and Siren making quick work of Elevate. But at this point in time, they are looking at the bottom of the barrel. They don't have the best of credits. They don't have the best of tactics right now. They really need to recuperate. I'm not too sure if they've even called a timeout, but this is the time they really need to because it's round number 10. There's only two more rounds that you have within this first half. Exactly. This round has just sped away from all of us, right? It feels like it was just moments ago that the map just started, but now we're 10 rounds in, 11th round on the board, and this guy's composition, right? The double duelist, the Neon and the Jet tends to be a little bit more attacker-sided. Yep. The fact that they're doing so well on defense already just there. gives them so much space uh, and uh, you know, ch and a chance to close out the map when you switch sides eventually. Even if Elevate win these last two rounds, which I think is a necessity, it's still going to be hard for them. Whoa, what a shot coming in from Vera! Takes his time, patient as always, little sidestep. And he just eliminates Nakia from across the map. Look at the X on the minimap. My downtown, goodness. it was more at least 50 meters or more. That didn't even what look like it was open. on his head. Who, who would have thought 50 meters down the line? You lose on Nakia, and lots of times when you pick up Nakia, you ca cannot make a breakthrough. The entry is suddenly so much more slower, and Rico is feeling the pain, the demise of losing out Nakia here. It's the same double up setup, or at least, you know, option that they did on Bind. Again. It's catching Elevate off guard. They need to be a little bit aggressive. The stun and paranoia is perfectly placed. Wayne gets the kill though, and so does Grumble. Vera around the corner, up against Pajay, but he's only good for two. He needed to get an ace to win that one, and it's not gonna be happening. Nine rounds to two, DSG. Flipping the script. After an abysmal start to bind, they do it to Elevate. They just tear them apart on this defensive side. It's been perfect. Absolutely, and I think this timeout much needed. With that, it is the very last timeout they can afford within this half year, and they have full rifles. Lockdown is available on Pud J, but how much can you really close down? So with that, there are a few holes and weaknesses coming into the composition to elevate. And of course, Pudgey is the only one up here that has nine kills flaring. Unfortunately, our first map MVP down to zero kills and it's a bit upsetting to see right it's also one of those situations that it could be just a lack of experience playing together especially with the double controller comp here and then trying to overrun one particular site you don't even have that much space to work with and the double ops are rearing its head again i think elevate realized it hey, vera found the first kill towards mid and then juicy with an op towards b that is how you let your individuals shine bright. You put them on the best weapon in the game, you set them up in angles that they would find advantageous. Pop flash with them, stun for them, you flash, you smoke for them, and you let them farm those kills. Elevate. Important timeout, and safe to say, an even more important round. This round needs to go in their favor. Yep. Especially with the composition that they have. It's not turned out the way they want. Vera holding this line with the AWP. They should expect this. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, but Nakia answers back with a headshot through the boxes. That is, that is something that I didn't think was the answer, but it does work at the very end. Wayne still staying on site though, with the Odin no less, gets tagged down, and he will pay with his life for the first time. For the very first time, Elevate has gotten access to this side without losing 
uh, a man advantage situation. They find those two opening kills, and now they back up towards A main. Very nicely done from Nakia, getting the initial kill on Vera, and you then on vertical onto the box here, getting Wayne off guard. Here comes the ultimate from Putt J, trying to just double down on the site. Crumble, as well as the rest of his teammates. They're trying to make deal with it, but they're unable to see anything at all. That's what happens with the double controllers. And look, it is just a vision block after vision block. Even the aftershock comes in, doesn't quite need to just connect. Nakia finds one for one. Grumbo and Juicy now has to play a little bit of the info game. Gets a Nero Thaffa, but unfortunately does not have the spray power to bring it down. And Elevate gets a third point as the side closes. Yeah, big difference right there was because Wayne was not alive, right? You didn't have the smokes, the omen, uh, dark harvest to be able to section off the right side. It, it came down to a lot of just aim duels. And with the spike tick down so low already, it was a nice... Effort coming in from Elevate to secure that round and a must eat the one. You can see against their faces, a little bit of concern. They need to have a very strong start here in the second half if they want a chance in this map, if they want a chance to put themselves as the first team in the grand finals. Yeah, but if we know anything, at least they have double controller, which could work a little bit better here on the defender end. But if we know Abyss, the way we know Abyss. It's still a very large map. There's so many areas that you need to cover. Even for DSG, they took a bit of time here to finally get into the group. Elevate. If they are stronger in defenders, they're going to show it right now. And I think they're trying to make a yeah. move on because library is going to be the point of attack. Arguably, this is the side that both of these compositions are stronger on, right? DSG, more of an attack side of comp. Elevate, more of a defender side of comp. So how do these teams perform? On the stronger sides each, Vera getting a bit of presence here towards A, baiting out the smoke from the Astra. So meanwhile, DSG, two of their players walking up mid. That is interesting for a pistol strat. Rico, more than aware of this. Does he hit the shot though? No. Juicy, gonna ring out a couple of bullets just to let his enemies know that he's there. He's gonna back off, join his team back towards this B side, execute. Recon dart comes through. Give those with no information just yet. Ariza expecting presence here. Nakia. Couple rafters. We'll land a couple of shots. Here comes the execute into the site. A dash straight in. Riza stunned up. Playing within the smoke. Nakia gets the first and Riza holding down his angle. Grumble picks oh, up one onto Nakia. Oh, the, re the shock dart gets pulled out. Not the best option right there. Ritko playing around the smoke. Expecting it to drop. Gets the first kill on Tavera. But still, advantage goes in the way of DSG. And flaring in the post plan, in the clutch. In oh. a 1v2, spots up the head of Wayne. A grumble swinging around the long side, spots him out as well. And it's a one tap for the ages. Three kills on the Sentinel player. And that is 10 on the board. Double digits now found for DSG. They win both of the pistols. Oh no, they win out the second pistol, but oh, it feels like they won out both because of the scoreline, but. <laughs> Yeah, they won the, the second round, right? It was because of that thrifty, but yep. still. Impressive and very much needed pistol round. Does not go in the way of Elevate. Yep. DSG steal it away. It's got to be rough from here on out. It is rough, but the silver lining for Elevate is that they did put out a very impressive stall there. Total vision block, unable to make give DSG a lot away. But now though, at least for Vera, he is seeing some, some potential here. And Wayne is actually the one that opens it up. And he does so... Uh, oh my god, that was actually pushed out in B, okay. And with that, yeah. Rekko pushed out so far up. And that's where he went down in his demise. I think trying to get the orb, I believe so. Um, I think he was just trying to find some space, but mm. DSG more than aware that Elevate is going to be a little bit aggressive. They need to take some space somewhere. And so when DSG put a bunch of pressure towards A main, Rekko was hoping for perhaps free map control towards B main, or an isolated 1v1. Unfortunately, Wayne, more than aware of it, holds it down with the Outlaw. Contact play coming up. A beautiful peek coming in from Wayne. He's lighting up the server. He's lighting up Abyss. Riza catches a nice right click on Tavera. They drop him from heaven. It gives them a chance, but Wayne, four kills with the Outlaw. Close range. Sniper duels still favor him. Nakia at 1v3. Sheriff in his hand. Pops the dash, but no one here for the time being. They're all playing towards sight. Playing the post plant. PSG not gonna give him an opportunity back into this. Ah, this is so tough, man. They don't have the firearms here. The read is all over as well, it gets picked off. This is literally the worst situation you can come up for. Elevate. 
No abilities left for Nokia. He does have to go in for the fight though. He does manage to find one. That's a great consolation prize. But with that, DSG brings themselves to 11 and 3. A very, very convincing scoreline to start with in the first map of Abyss that we're seeing in VCT. I can't believe it was 412 in. F I mean, 412 for DSG on Bind. They pulled the comeback, and now they're going to almost have the exact same scoreline here on Abyss, doing it to elevate. What a crazy switch up of, of, of scenarios. We're one round away from pushing Eleve into that Grand Finals. But now DSG, you know, they want to rewrite the script. They want to put Destiny in their own hands. Yep. Hold this round for DSG. Elevate need this round. Perhaps a storyline that they just wanted to create for themselves. You know, the bit of the, the little eSports riches uh, kind of situation as we bring ourselves here. But hopefully, at least for DSG's sake, that a repeat of Bind does not happen to them in the opposite direction. And with that, respect is actually given out. They're trying to get some information here, but <laughs> with that, in moments, no respect whatsoever. There comes the fast lane, and Vera with the oh spectre, spraying everything down. Anybody within what? sight is going Shut down. Back. Sight is now in oh, possession yeah. of DSG, just like that. Riza's on the other end, but he's unable to make a breakthrough. Hey, okay, Riza's in the sight. Riza's creeped oh. into the sight unnoticed. Oh, but the trade frag is there. And now it's just left alone, flaring. 1v3, another clutch required. Such a difficult, extremely tall task. Vera and Styron, technically isolated. How does Flying want to navigate this? He has two stars available. Clearing out the close corner, makes an audio cue. We're smoking up the spike. Caps on it, hoping for a reaggression. But Styron, big brain, goes up and above. No idea whatsoever. And Styron sees all yet again. It's 12 on the board. DSG. Match point. I can't believe the contrast, the difference in teams that we're seeing on Bind versus Abyss. What an entry coming in from Vera. Just slides in their face. Rex shot. And it's always down to clutches and time and time again, DSG do not let that go away from them. What an impressive uh, set of... I'm lost, I'm lost words. What an impressive <laughs> abyss. They've won out the bonus round as well. This is... This is surely it. This is surely it. This is surely a story to talk about for, for the times to come. And I think for DSG... Even making it to this point, they've, they've got to be feeling pumped up. they got to feel the adrenaline here. We're one away from rewriting the whole entire storyline that you mentioned earlier. Elevate one point away. And now the same situation is being done onto the opposite end. Uh, and DSG as well. They have the guns. They have so much Oof. with them. Elevate on the other end. They can purchase, but with half a shield. And... I don't Reza's, want to give them... Yeah, Reza's one-off is Hunter's Fury. Yeah, Hunter's Fury, right. Hunter's off Hunter's Fury. But I don't want to give them the, the doubt just yet because we have seen comebacks when they are on the back foot. So at least for Elevate, I'm thinking they're going to switch something up. This could potentially be the last oh. round. After the attack time, I mean, we got to rely on Red Cole. Like, what is the call? How do you navigate this absurd situation? One round harder than what DSG did to them. 312 scoreline. Larry out the open. Presence spotted. There. Mm -hmm. It's around the corner. The counter stun. Ooh, he creeps back in. Just as Tyron peeks on that long side. Vera, the first one to find a pick. That is just through heaven. I'm not sure if he saw Nakia, but he still managed to get that kill. Breaks the alarm board as well. And there comes the Omen teleport. Wayne is in their spawn. My ult's ready. Okay, no, that, he's, in, he's in his own spawn, all right? I almost <laughs> got freaked out for a second. I thought... But yeah, that, that just puts confusion in the heads of Elevate. Where has Wayne gotten yeah. off to? They have to worry about spawn. They have to worry about all these different positions. I think they did manage to break it. I'm not too sure. But still, they have to be very cautious of different areas. They've lost Nakia. Yeah. Looks like B-side is going to be the commit. There is a turret up in mid site though. Left. Gives information as well. But here is the trigger pull. We've seen multiple times that Vera pulls up. Running up to the back of site, watching all the edges, and Ultimate is just in the succession here. Spike is down. 
As for Elevate, they are nowhere near. They're holding up the entry points, but they're being taken down. Siren's going to take Pajay, and there comes the new attack. The ping, and that's all the information that they need. Farah is going to look to get the job done. And these guys, they did it. They brought it back. Went one point away for Elevate to continue on. They are going to be pushing on into the upper bracket. We have a first finalist, Grant, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, our first grand finalists in Valorant Challengers Malaysia Singapore, disguised, have done it. They have beaten the odds. They have gone up against a Goliath of Elevate. They pulled, you know, a, an incredible comeback from up their sleeves. They, it is nothing short of incredible what they did on Bind. And Abyss was just a one-sided affair. Yeah, Elevate floated it. Elevate technically picked into that map by binding up, banning uh, Lotus and choosing to go on Abyss, but their strategies was just not working. DSG's team play came out so well in that Abyss match. You saw Vera being aggressive, you know, together with Juicy on the jet as well. The double duel is doing the damage. You saw Styron always stunning for his teammates. And even on the attacking side, even the last round, you saw flaring under so much pressure. There was a bunch of utilities in place. And that attacking side was just really, really solid. It wasn't just a 